Hello and welcome to my first video actually of 2022 on Duo two-factor authentication for Windows Remote Desktop Protocol or RDP and Windows Logon. This is actually going to be my first session or my first Duo Lab session which is a new series that I'll be putting together on my YouTube channel focusing specifically on, you've guessed it, than none other than Duo. So what we'll be doing is we'll be looking at different integration methods um, that could probably help with a lot of your use cases around multi-factor authentication and the shift to uh, zero trust within your environment. Now, for those that are tuning in and have watched previous content of mine, it's going to work slightly different to how I normally produce my content. And the reason being is because Duo has a bunch of very detailed, accurate and cool documentation that is available to anybody that is looking at finding the information on how to integrate Duo with certain applications. And what I want to do is I want to show you how you can actually leverage that documentation as we go through the different integrations so that you can use that documentation to deploy and use Duo within your environment. As I say, Duo is meant to be easy, uh, quick, and see exactly how it works here. So if I just go to duo.com forward slash docs it's as simple as that and then if we just search in for this demonstration that we'll be doing today we'll be looking at RDP integration and uh, Windows logon so if I just was to type RDP we get two options we're going to be focusing on Windows RDP so I'll go ahead and I'll click that and you can see here now straight away We've now pulled up the documentation for the Duo authentication for Windows Logon and RDP. As I said, the documentation is there for anybody who needs it and it's structured in a way to make it as easy as possible for anybody to be able to use Duo and integrate it with whatever it is that you want to integrate it with. So, if you are deploying Duo and you are using certain applications, you can simply use the documentation that's available on duo.com forward slash docs uh, to help either conduct and complete your proof of concept or actually deploy Duo in a live environment. Of course, if you would prefer to conduct POCs or have um, a Cisco resource actually work with you to successfully de deploy Duo, then speak to your account teams because we would be more than happy to help you along in your journey as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go through the documentation as we uh, deploy. Um, what I will say is for those that um, are not familiar with Duo and why we potentially be looking at using Duo with Windows Logon and RDP um, is discuss uh, you know two potential use cases that we could actually use this integration for. So you know the first one is if you want to have multi-factor authentication on RDP sessions, um, it's a good way of being able to uh, secure. Uh, those sessions and secondly uh, you can also secure uh, Windows logon uh, with uh, you know local accounts as, as well so it's uh, great in that sense if you are looking to uh, secure these two elements the process uh, is the same so this documentation is the one that you would use uh, to actually secure the two if you was looking at securing the two Duo start by giving um, you an overview in the documentation uh, in terms of you know what it can secure um, in terms of you know the support um, i.e. Windows and uh, server uh, infrastructure as well as uh, you know other platforms. 
Um, so you can see here, as I said earlier, we can secure local logon accounts um, or we can also secure domain joined um, uh, devices and, uh, and accounts. Um, logins at the local console uh, and or running incoming RDP connections, as I mentioned. So let's say, for instance, you uh, or have a company whereby you connect to a VPN and uh, once you've connected to the VPN you can RDP to a number of machines. If you wanted to you could use Duo to uh, provide that um, multi-factor authentication to secure access to or to further secure access to those uh, RDP uh, hosts. Um, again, the good thing as well with uh, Duo is that uh, when it comes to uh, user access control, so elevated privileges within Windows, we can also uh, secure that as well. Um, so that if you say, for instance, a user has successfully authenticated using um, Duo, to an RDP session and then they try to say run an elevated um, or run ad, run as administrator uh, command prompt then you could also prompt for Duo to uh, complete that multi-factor authentication there as well. So it's great in that sense. Um, on the flip side, if you didn't want to receive those prompts all the time, uh, there is a remember me feature so that you can um, just remember the, um, you know, once you've actually authenticated, um, you can actually remember uh, that, that user for a specific amount of time, uh, whatever's set. There is some important notes uh, and considerations um, to consider. So by default, um, dual authentication will add two-factor authentication to all interactive user logins, um, whether that's local or over RDP. So if it was the case that you actually wanted to just secure um, RDP connections to uh, a particular device and not the local login uh, connections we could do that there is a setting where we can select um, and it's actually specified here to only prompt for dual authentication when logging in via RDP so we can do that as well giving um, you that flexibility that you need in that sense there is a few other considerations to um, take into account before you actually go ahead and deploy this um, so I guess kind of goes without saying sometimes Windows users must have passwords to log into the computer uh, users within uh, with blank passwords may not log in after dual authentication has been installed so um, I think generally within working environments you're not going to really come across a computer whereby it doesn't have um, a user login prompt once fired up but you know if you do have those you know it's important to just take that into consideration also if you need to remove um, the dual application that is installed to actually get all this working um, and you have BitLocker encryption enabled um, ensure that you have the recovery key because you need, will need that in order to boot into safe mode and actually remove uh, the uh, dual application as well. There's some support limitations, um, not a lot actually to be fair. Um, so the application doesn't support Surface Pro X or other devices with ARM processors as well. So it's important to take that into uh, consideration as well. Um, the application does have features such as fail mode and offline access and the UAC protection that we talked about earlier. We will take a look in a little bit more detail at some of these features um, either in this video or in upcoming videos just to kind of give you a feel for uh, the flexibility and usability of, of this um integration as well so if you are keen on looking at any of those additional features um, look out for those in 
this video or in upcoming videos as well. In terms of connectivity requirements, um, the application used um, will communicate with Duo services on TCP port 443. Um, so it's important to make sure that if you have uh, firewall rules in place, um, not allowing communications outbound on, on that specific port and protocol, um, then you will need to uh, open, open that up as well. In terms of systems requirements, um, for those that are kind of looking at moving to Windows 11, the good news is that we do actually support this now. So Windows 11 as of version 4.2.0 is supported. And similarly, Windows 10 and Windows 8.1 is supported as well. When we look at the server um, devices that are supported, we've got windows server 12 and r2 all the way up to uh, server 2022 which is the uh, latest one so if you are looking at deploying this just make sure that you double check the system requirements just to make sure that the device uh, or devices you are looking at uh, deploying this to is actually supported in terms of second factor authentication um, modes that are supported, um, we've got the Duo Push, which is the, the best and most secure way to uh, actually uh, authenticate with your second factor. We've got the Duo Mobile Passcodes, SMS Passcodes, Adware Tokens or one-time passcodes, including the YubiKeys if you have um, YubiKeys in your environment. Uh, phone call or bypass codes as well. Uh, the U2F is limited to offline access only as well. So if you are looking at using that, just to make sure that you double check the documentation again. And then as I mentioned uh, with the documentation here, the great thing about this documentation is not only that it's structured, um, it actually will give you a video overview of what you actually need to do similar uh, similar to uh, what we're going to be doing here today but i guess in in some respects we may be going a little bit deeper or looking at specific features uh, a little bit more here as well so before you get started um the important an important an important point to uh, let you know is that you need to make sure that in, users are enrolled before installing uh, the uh, the Windows logon in integration uh, because it doesn't in, uh, support inline self enrollment so that if unenrolled users do attempt to um, or do come across the prompt and the dot exist in duo uh, then they're not going to be able to authenticate uh, using the second factor authentication and get access to that device. So that is one important uh, point that I would like to uh, make you aware of. We spoke about the different um, modes that are supported, so push notifications, phone calls, SMS passcodes, etc. Um, and we've just pointed out there that if the user doesn't exist in Duo, uh, the user may not be able to log into a system. There's a video overview and then we go into the first steps really that you need to do. So for somebody that's already got a Duo account and just wants to get started, then um, step one is probably already done. But for those that have not got a Duo account or are very new at looking at Duo and are thinking about using this um, uh, duo to protect RDP and Windows logon sessions, then you start at step one. And again, great thing about the duo documentation is it's made and developed to be as straightforward as possible. So if you do need a uh, duo account, you can sign up um, for a trial account if you want to start first there. Um, and this link will take you through to uh, get started there. 
Um, ideally, if you already have a Duo uh, account, then you will need to access the admin panel and uh, navigate to applications. We'll then look to secure in step three the Microsoft uh, RDP uh, from the application list and we'll run through this process in the demonstration that I'm about to give as well. So uh, don't worry about that. Um, there's a recommendation here when we start speaking about um, for unenrolled users. So what we uh, recommend here is for um, when you configure a new user policy, uh, make sure the application is set to deny access as unenrolled users um, may complete dual enrollment. Uh, Apologies. So what this is saying here is that um, if we create a new application uh, policy, make sure that we or we recommend that uh, the user policy is set to deny access for unenrolled users as they will be able to complete the duo um, authentication. And as I said, there's no inline self-enrollment either um, for, for this uh, actual method. We then need to download the Duo authentication for Windows Logon, and that's just essentially a, a small package that's installed on the host. So if you are looking at rolling this out to a number of machines in your environment, what I would suggest is um, at least as a proof of concept, make sure you uh, deploy this maybe on one uh, test machine first or one machine first so they can actually understand how it works and play around with it and then if you are then comfortable and looking at rolling that out across your estate then you know if you do have a Windows uh, a Microsoft estate rather then maybe the best way to uh, roll that out would be by using some sort of uh, management package or group policy um, etc so um, that can actually be uh, a, a quicker and easier way to, to, to roll this out as well. Um, there's also a point here around um, offline access. You can enable the offline access um, as you go through the... Um, you can do it now in the offline access settings section and the dual application or return to the admin panel later to configure offline access after first verifying log on success with two factor authentication. So essentially what this is saying is, you know, get the integration set up first and configured. And then if offline access is something you're looking at exploring further, then um, you can return back to, to that later and, and do that as well. Um, so just before we get into the demo, just quickly going through the rest of the document. Um, remember devices for Windows logon. Um, as I said earlier on, uh, you have the ability to actually remember uh, or set um, remember devices uh, for the application so that you're not always prompted to complete that multi-factor authentication again for a specific time frame as well. So we'll take a look at that as well. There are a few deployment tips down here. Um, especially if you, you, you deploy in an improved concept environment. Um, so it might be worth taking a look at those. Mm -hmm. And then we actually go into the installation steps here as well. So again, you have um, a step-by-step -step guide essentially on uh, you know what everything means um, and how to actually deploy this as well. So we'll run through these settings in the uh, demo as well. And then we go on to uh, offline access, which is a different section uh, within the same documentation. So we'll, we'll look at covering that as well. And then you also have a, a network diagram just to explain how it works. Um, so if we have a look here on one RDP client, the RDP connection console login uh, is initiated the primary authentication of the window credentials is entered so that could be you know the local credentials or the uh, domain credentials once that's done 
the Windows log on, the Duo Windows logon credential provider connection mm -hmm. is established to Duo over the uh, port 443 TCP, uh, and that's number three here. So you can see it's uh, connecting to the cloud. And then the secondary authentication is performed by a, a Duo service there. So you you know in this uh, example here you get a push notification as well. And then you if uh, it's legitimate accept that, and then that's returned uh, back to uh, the application, and uh, you'll get the authentication response. And then providing it's successful. Uh, the RTP, the RDP session or console session is uh, logged in as well. You do have uh, some troubleshooting notes, how to uninstall. Um, so there's, you know, it's very uh, in depth for what you need to be able to get started. So what we'll do now is we'll, uh, without further ado, enough of me uh, talking through the uh, documentation and about the integration itself, we'll look at now jumping into the actual demo. So now let's actually go through the steps to configure uh, and get this working. So again, what we'll do is we'll use the documentation and again, I highly encourage that you do leverage the documentation as you're going through or trying to protect uh, different applications because it's very useful and uh, detailed. So if you don't have a Duo account yet, then uh, step one is to sign up for a Duo account so you can start your free uh, trial just by en entering a couple of details here and then you'll be able to start your, uh, get registered and start your free trial. So if you don't have uh, Duo yet, then uh, get started today. Now, once we've done that, assuming um, everybody's done that now, what we'll do is we'll log into the Duo admin panel and we'll navigate to applications. Um, so it's a good idea to, if you're new to Duo and you've just signed up to Duo, just take a little bit of time to familiarize yourself with the actual administration panel uh, before starting uh, to protect applications. It'll just make uh, life a little bit easier. Even though it is a simple um, UI to understand and everything is, um, pretty straightforward just take your time just to have a little look through um, that so here is my uh, Duo admin panel here um, I'm logged in on a demo account um, so once you are logged in and you're familiar with um, the, the admin panel what we need to do is we need to go to applications to start protecting uh, Windows logon and uh, RDP as well so once we get to applications, we need to then click protect an application. And then what we can do is we can actually type in the filter uh, or in the search bar to filter uh, RDP. So you can see here we'll, we're going to be using Microsoft RDP for two-factor authentication. And the great thing about the admin panel as well is the, the applications are also, um, also have documentation associated uh, with them as well. So if we was to click that, it would open the very same document that we're referring to uh, now, which is which is great. So I still got that one open. <clears throat> so let's just go to protect. And now there's a couple of things just to mention here. So when you're protecting applications, it's important that your secret key remains um, secret. Given that this is a demo account and we're just demonstrating how to uh, integrate this particular application, I will be showing these uh, details uh, because they'll be torn down straight after this lab anyway. Um, but yeah, do keep your secret uh, key uh, secret. Don't, don't share that with, uh, with anyone.
So we've done that. We've got to Microsoft RDP now. And again, you can see a link here for RDP documentation, which is the documentation that we're using. Uh, you've got a few other bits and pieces. So you've got policies where you can create policies or apply uh, policies to, um, uh, to, to an application if you've already created policies for a group of users or policies just in general. Um, every application will have by default the global policy applied um, that can be uh, modified um, as you wish global policy kind of says it in its name really but what you really want to do with the global policies is make sure that um, you are kind of tailoring the policy to uh, meet multiple uh, applications uh, where the default or the global policy uh, would be used. Um, you've got a few settings down here so we can rename this um, so that when we uh, receive the push notification we can easily identify uh, what application it is. So in our case what we'll do is we'll do um, we'll just type RDP and win log on we got some uh, user normalization settings uh, we have um, other bits and pieces here so we've got such as voice greetings notes um, all these things we're not really going to cover today and then we've got the offline mode that we'll cover in a different um, video that I spoke about earlier as well so we'll take a look at those in a little bit more detail but the main thing that we want to um, want to look at today is um, we're going to be focusing on policies because what I recommend is for every application that you integrate you have a specific policy uh, for either say a group of users or actually for the application itself as well and then we'll need these details um, a little bit later on as well and you'll see why. So we've done step two, we've navigated to applications and we've selected uh, protect application and found the Microsoft RDP application um, and we've clicked protect. Um, now we have the integration key, secret key and API hostname, that's those that I've just called out here. We will need those for the uh, integration as it says here. Um, and as I kind of mentioned there in step four, um, it is recommended that we create a new policy for the ap application itself. Um, and within that new uh, policy, that new user policy uh, will be set to deny access as unenrolled users are not able to um, self-enroll uh, for this application. So once we've done that, we need to um, download the Duo Authentication Windows Logon Installer Package. And again, it gives us a link to uh, where we can actually download that. So um, what we'll do is we'll download this on the uh, demo machine that we're going to be using. I'll just see if I can um, get that up. If I just now bring that host across, and then what we'll do is we'll um, do the same. So we'll go to duo.com uh, forward slash docs, and then if we forward slash again RDP, that should take us straight to the document. And we'll just click on that link to download the application so now I am on the machine where we'll be installing the uh, Windows logon application for duo um, I've downloaded this from the link that's attached in the documentation which is all well and good if you only have one or two Course where you're looking at deploying this but if you do have a larger state where you are looking at deploying this solution then it's probably best off that you use um, some sort of um, uh, tool that allows you to roll out um, at scale you know such as you know group policy 
um, or what have you. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to run through the installation now of this. So we'll just load it, get it loaded up on this machine. So when it's extracted and loaded, we um, are presented then with the installation wizard for the Duo authentication. So what we'll do is we'll just proceed through uh, the installation wizard, fairly straightforward. Um, the first step is to do a connectivity check. So if you do have, um, if this device does go via a uh, proxy then make sure those details are included or bypass that proxy whichever uh, method is, is suitable for your environment the api host name we get from the actual um, application on the duo admin panel that we're looking at uh, protecting so we can see here the api host name so we'll just copy that and we'll go back to and we'll paste that into here and then we'll go next because I'm not using a uh, proxy. And then now, lastly, we need the integration key and the secret key. As I said, the secret key uh, remains uh, secret. Um, so what we'll do, we'll just get the integration key. Put that into there. And then we'll get the secret key as well. This is a demo environment, so... Um, it's okay if I output that, but in your environment, please do keep those keys to yourself. We have received the error you can see here, bad request timestamp, um, which this error usually refers to uh, NTP or the time synchronization between the machine um, and its source. Uh, as this is a VM, it should be in sync, but if we just take a look at the time, it's actually 10 minutes out. So if I um, just quickly adjust this date and time, hopefully we should be able to rectify this and continue. Okay, so we'll just turn, turn this off for a moment. And what I'll do is I'll um, set the time manually. the correct time so if I check now yep that's been updated there so uh, what I'll try to do now is I'll just um, I'll min minimize that for now and then if we just go back to the actual wizard let's just try proceed now so there you go. So now you can see that we've been able to proceed. Um, so if you do get that error, always check the time. Uh, make sure that the host is um, synced with whatever NTP source that you are using as well. I don't recommend doing what I've just done, changing time manually, because it can get a little bit messy. So just make sure uh, you are using NTP. In terms of the wizard, if we go back to this now, we can see that we've got different integration options. Some of them we spoke briefly about at the start of uh, this session. So we can see that we have the option to uh, bypass dual authentication when offline, which is essentially failing open. Um, so we have the option here to uh, enable this. This is enabled by default. Um, and you can see here that this option enables uh, us to allow users to log on with on, without completing two-factor authentication if the Duo Security Cloud service is unreachable. Um, if you plan to enable offline access with multi-factor authentication, consider disabling fail open to prevent unrolled in users from logging on. So essentially what this means is that if you don't select this, um, you'll still be able to complete uh, two-factor authentication for enrolled users um, even when offline however if um, for any reason this machine cannot reach the duo cloud um, and this is enabled uh, then we'll still be able to uh, authenticate um, you know using the uh, primary cred credentials as well 
Um, user or push to authenticate if available. So what this essentially means is that when uh, we either log into this machine via IDP or locally, um, the two-factor authentication will uh, be will send a push notification to uh, enrolled users' uh, devices automatically without the need to um, press um, or, or, or select your method for a authentication. And we'll see how that works. I'll leave, um, I'll leave that on. Um, fail open, I will turn off because uh, we are going to demonstrate the um, offline mode as well. And then lastly, we have an option that's not selected by default, which is to only prompt for dual authentication when logging in via RDP. So this means if you don't want to uh, secure uh, local authentication login attempts with duo, then um, and you only want to secure RDP attempts, then we can select this option. However, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to um, leave this uh, disable because we want to prompt for uh, the secondary authentication for um, RDP sessions and Windows uh, logons as well. So we'll proceed there with next um, and sorry just before I actually do that just make sure that if you are looking at trialing this that that, that it's in line with uh, what you are attempting to do within your environment as well. If you are unsure about some of the features um, or want more explanation around those, then just check out the uh, Duo documentation and you have a lovely little link to that here. So we'll say next. Um, we don't, on this virtual machine, we're not going to be uh, playing about with smart cards, um, so we're going to uh, leave all this. But if your environment did have smart cards and you wanted to uh, enable that smart card support, then you could do so here. So we'll just proceed with next. Um, and then we've got the option to enable uh, secondary factor authentication for elevated privileges um, as well, which we spoke about uh, previously. Um, so you can see if we enable this, currently it's disabled, um, so we can enable this as well if we wanted to. Um, and what I'll do is I will enable that because we will go through um, a little bit of looking at that in uh, the video demonstration as well. Um, so we'll leave this one disabled. Um, so we don't want to just protect uh, elevated privileges. We want to uh, keep it on for everything. Uh, we can also protect those still while uh, offline, which is good. And uh, we can also allow offline enrollment during user elevated privileges. So this says allow for offline access enrollment during password protected UAC prompts when offline access is enabled. So we'll just keep those um, enabled there and then we'll press next. And then lastly, we'll just complete um, by pressing install, which is then going to go away and install the application on this uh, machine for us. Cool. So once that's done, uh, we get the uh, wizard back to let us know that the installation is uh, now complete. You can look at the Windows installer logs if you uh, choose to. However, we're just going to press finish on this. Now that should mean now that the Windows logon is now installed. So what we'll do is we'll just minimize this. Um, before we actually start to test this, what we'll do is we'll test RDP and we'll test uh, local logon as well. Um, but before we actually do that, what we'll do is we'll just flip back now to the Duo admin panel for the actual application itself. It may have timed out. No, it's still in. So um, if we now um, look at creating a policy so we can um, edit the, the global policy um, or we can um, create a new policy which is uh, defined as a custom policy. Um, so what we'll do is we'll create a new policy because what I like to do is create a uh, policy for every application 
um, as well. Uh, do bear in mind that when you are creating policies, depending on uh, your environment and whether you're testing this or fully implementing it, um, you know, it makes sense the duration into how you configure these policies. If you are looking at um, a limited deployment, then it's probably best off um, that you create some users um, and uh, groups and specify policies only for uh, those users in those groups while testing. Nevertheless, what we'll do is we will uh, create a policy name. So we'll call this one uh, RDP win logon policy. And um, new users, what we'll do is we will, uh, we can't, so require enrollment is not supported for this uh, application. So what we'll do for the new users is we'll just deny access. So this means uh, deny authentication to enrolled users, uh, which means they will have to enroll um, before they're allowed access. Authentication policy, what we will do is we'll enforce the two-factor authentication uh, when applicable um, unless superseding policy is configured, which in this case we're not going to. So we'll we'll keep um, enroll, enforce 2FA on. Um, we're not going to go through, I didn't want to touch on um, a lot of the other policy elements in this video considering that we're just solely focusing on getting the integration of rdp and windows logon configured but probably in uh, upcoming videos we can uh, look at some of these options uh, within the policies to uh, see how we can further protect our users devices and also uh, networks uh, accessing uh, specific applications as well so what we'll do now is we'll just create this policy and as you can see there now what we've got is a uh, policy here as well. Um, so if we go back to the application we can apply that policy. So what we'll do is we can apply here policy to all users or groups of users if you prefer. What we're going to do is we're going to apply it to all users and you can see that this policy here that we've just created uh, pops up. So we'll just apply that policy and then you can see now that policy actually is above now the global policy as well. So this policy will be looked at um, first. Once you're happy with that, if we just scroll down to the bottom and uh, we'll save that. And then that's the application saved. Now what we need to do is we just need to create a user um, in, because this is, um, the device that we're using is not uh, part of any um, Active Directory um, it's just a, a, a local account. Um, so we, we're we not able to do things like directory syncs. Um, so what we'll do is just for the purposes of this demo, we'll just create um, that user. And I think that user is called Win10Lab. We'll just go with that. Um, and then we can, yeah, require multi-factor authentication. Um, and what we can do is we can send an email because, as I said, we need to make sure that this user is enrolled with a uh, second factor authentication device before they can um, complete that uh, authentication. So what we need to do is we can add um, an email here and then what we'll do is we'll save the changes um, as well and then we'll enroll that that user before we actually test the authentication so um, if I just pull up a test device that we're going to use to enroll this user we can then proceed So if I just pull in this um, virtual Android device, it's not the fastest, um, but what we'll do is we'll take, um, or we'll look uh, for an email address to um, our user, 
which is uh, the Windows 10 lab user and um, then we'll enroll uh, this user so that we can actually test the RDP on Windows logon as well so whiskey demo one let's um, put that in there gmail.com oops wrong place if we put it in the email and then what we'll do is we'll save those changes there so now if we go to users we can see that last logon we've never authenticated but we've got this user and we've got this uh, email address as well uh, for this user so what we can do is we can then send uh, an enrollment email on this user so what we'll do is we'll do that now and we can see now that the enrollment code has been sent so with this Android device you can see now that I've received the uh, en enrollment email here um, and then we need to go ahead and click on this link so um, what I'll do now is I'll just click on that and then we'll go through the enrollment process So once that loads, you can see here um, I'm enrolling to uh, protect the Network WizKid demo account. So I can start the setup and then we can see here uh, what type of device I'm adding. So in this case, I'm just going to add this tablet just so that I can show you the uh, push notifications. So we'll just press continue. I've already got Duo installed on this Android device so if I now click take me to Duo Mobile we can see now that I can uh, name the account so I'll just add this as Network WizKid Demo and press save and there we go so you can see that that account has now been added go back to the admin panel I may have to sign back in uh, now I'm good. So if we go to uh, users, we should be able to see now uh, that that status for that user is active and we've got one device registered. So if we just click on that there, uh, we can see that we've got this device um, enrolled now. Ignore um, the security warnings, um, we're not going to focus on that today and it's purely because I'm using a uh, virtual um, Android device as well. So that user's enrolled now, we've got the application policy in place um, we should now be able to uh, test access now. So if I just come out of this RDP session for this user disconnect that and then what we'll do is we'll uh, reconnect back again so if I connect now back to this using RDP is what we're going to do first we can see the username the IP address and we connect here Oops, there we go and we just put in the local password and we connect to that make that a little bit bigger we can see now that we've got the automatic push that's being sent to our device for duo so this is a secondary authentication secondary factor authentication working um, let's go back to that device and if we just now open duo mobile we should have received that push notification There we go. So now it's coming up. So now you can see that we've got um, RDP and Win Logon, which is the application. We can see the user. We can see the host name. And if this is legitimate, then we just approve that. So once we've approved that, what we'll do is we'll go back to the uh, remote desktop. We should then be able to uh, log into that device.
there you go so now you can see that it's logging in with that user and we're in and it's as simple as that so you can see that the process is very straightforward um, easy to get set up you can be set up within minutes and protecting your uh, local users or access to devices via RDP as well um, so if now we go to um, we can actually look at the reporting on the um, Duo admin panel. So if we look at the reports, we can see here that Windows RDP, uh, the session has been granted. We can see um, the desktop IP address, the location, um, and we can see the user um, as well. So, you know, we get nice information here for auditing and logging purposes which is great and the process is pretty much the, sa the same for local login so now if I just actually log in let's just open the console to this virtual machine so now um, assuming we have the local access so I'm on the VM side of this now which is essentially the local access. I will log in with this user and we should also be prompted for two factor. There you go. So we can see that the push is automatically being sent. Now, if we go back onto the other device, our Android device, uh, and I just refresh that. By the way, that should uh, just pop up, um, but it's because of the virtual machine that I'm using um, but if we just go back onto the duo app now we should have that push notification pop up there we go and then once we approve just approve that there we can see already that we're logging in now so that's it that's how we can protect Microsoft RDP and Windows log on using duo's multi-factor authentication very straightforward easy to set up and it doesn't really take that long to be up and running and protecting your devices as i say i will be covering more features such as the offline mode in upcoming videos so please do keep a lookout for those Again, you do have the documentation that you can refer to. But if you are looking at getting this set up, then get started today. Start your trial with Duo if you don't have a, an account. And if you do have an account but require some guidance or information, then just please reach out to the accounts team who will be able to help you further. Thank you for watching.